Hi everyone, my name is Kenny Coleman. I'm a senior technical marketing manager at VMware, focused on the Tanzu Kubernetes grid service for vSphere. In this demonstration, we'll be looking at creating a Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster using a custom specification. In this environment, a vSphere namespace has already been created. This vSphere namespace is simply called demo TKG NS. The namespace has been configured with permissions for the administrator at vSphere.local user with edit access to deploy resources to this namespace. In addition, a storage policy named demo TKG storage policy has been applied to the namespace as well. We will see later on that this storage policy is visible to the Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster. The kube control and kube control vSphere binaries have been installed and configured for use on my system. Using the kube control vSphere command, we will authenticate using vSphere SSO to the supervisor cluster. After authenticating, the following contexts are available. During this process, the kube config file is populated with all the available contexts for this particular user. Setting kube control to use the context of the demo TKG NS namespace allows provisioning of resources into that particular namespace. Creating a Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster is done using the declarative and desired state nature of Kubernetes. Before creating a cluster YAML specification, we can see what types of Kubernetes versions are available to us. Using the kube control git virtual machine images, we'll pull available images from the content library where it's subscribed to VMware's Kubernetes official repository. This can also be viewed inside the vCenter UI in the content library section. Next, we want to create a new YAML specification with an object of kind Tanzu Kubernetes cluster. The specification that is seen here is an adaptation of what's available in the public VMware documentation. Let's look through this line by line. Within the metadata section, the name is what the Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster will be called when it's deployed. This name will be recognized in the vCenter UI. Another required component is specifying the vSphere namespace where this Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster will be provisioned. Within the spec, the version is a direct mapping of what's available in the subscribed content catalog. Moving into the topology, this is where the ability for customization comes into play. A Kubernetes topology consists of at least one Kubernetes control plane image that runs all the Kubernetes services, such as the API server and control loops, with one or more Kubernetes workers that are responsible for running the workloads themselves. In each section, there is a count, which is analogous to a replica count in Kubernetes, denoting the number of each kind to be running. For a Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster, these are represented as virtual machines. The class for each type has a few different variations as well. First is denoting a guaranteed versus best effort. If a machine class has a guaranteed label, vSphere reservations for CPU and memory are set on the virtual machine, whereas best effort will not have any reservations at all. There are also t-shirt sizes available to set the amount of vCPU and RAM each machine will get. The sizes range from extra small to extra large. The virtual machine classes can be retrieved using the kubectl command as well. For this example, to keep resources light, the extra small variant will be utilized. Next is defining the storage class where the disks for these virtual machines will be placed. The storage class maps to a storage policy that was defined in the vSphere namespace. The next sections going over the settings is completely optional and can be left out unless you would like to customize it. The network settings define the type of CNI. For this type of deployment, Calico will be the default CNI. The services and pod ciders are taken from the documentation and have not been adjusted for this example. As the note shows, these IP ranges cannot overlap with the supervisor cluster. The storage section defines the storage policies that will be assigned as storage classes to the new cluster. Multiple storage policies can be added in a comma-separated array. At the same time, we can specify the default storage class that will be used for any persistent volume claim created inside the Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster. Next, using the kube control command, we will apply this manifest to the supervisor cluster. Going back into the vCenter view, we can view the virtual machines as they are provisioned, first for the control plane, and then later on for the worker nodes. The time this process takes will be dependent on your environment. For this, the process takes somewhere around 20 minutes in mine. After 20 minutes and seeing the objects being created in vCenter, using kube control, we can retrieve the Tanzu Kubernetes clusters available. 
We can also inspect the cluster as well to get a better view into the virtual machines themselves. Each one of these objects can be introspected even more using the describe command. Now that the Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster has been created, it's time to use it. Just as before, we need to authenticate against the cluster to add a token to our kubeconfig file. Using the additional flags of specifying the namespace as well as the cluster and then entering our password, it provides a list of all the resources and context that we can access. After setting the context to our Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster, it will function just like a normal Kubernetes cluster. An easy way to inspect the cluster is to use kubectl get nodes to see what nodes are running in the cluster, as well as looking at all the pods available. Thanks for watching this video on deploying a Tanzu Kubernetes grid cluster using the Tanzu Kubernetes grid service for vSphere. Get more information about the Tanzu Kubernetes grid service in the official documentation.